Hi there, my name is Kendrick and welcome to Travel and Live Free. In this video, I'm going to talk about my game plan to visit every single country in the world. And in this video specifically, I'm going to talk about Oceania and what my game plan is to visit every single country in Oceania. Before I talk about my game plan on how to visit every single country in Oceania that I have not yet visited, I want to talk about my criteria first when it comes to visiting different countries around the world. I have three main categories when it comes to traveling and my first category is that this country really fascinates me and I want to spend a lot of time really exploring it and ideally I would like to stay there for 30 days or longer. My second category is that this country seems cool and there's some specific sites that I want to see. I don't necessarily want to stay there for a month or longer, but definitely several days, enough for me to go see those major sites. And the third category that I have is checklist countries where there's nothing in this country that I really want to see. So for me, a quick in and out is what I want to do. Sometimes I stay overnight in those countries. Sometimes I just cross over the border and then I come back. Sometimes I fly in, come back out of the airport, explore it a little bit, come back and fly out. So this is that checklist country category. So as I go along this video talking about the different countries that I plan on visiting in Oceania, I'll mention if they fit in any of these three specific categories. I also try to prioritize countries where I want to do something like hiking or trekking because those are very age specific where I'm still pretty young right now that if I do get hurt, I will recover. But if I were to go to those places when I am in my 60s and I do get hurt, then that's not gonna bode well for me because the chance of me recovering is so much lower than it is if it were to happen to me right now. I also put the dangerous countries higher up on the list just because, like I said, I don't have a family and I don't have kids or a wife that I will leave behind with no, with no father if something were to happen to me. So I'd like to visit those countries first. So should anything happen to me, the repercussion is not so bad for other people as it is for me. I also try to visit countries that is close proximity with other countries that I have not visited yet because that way I can check off a few countries really quickly because of their close proximity. I also take into consideration the cost of traveling to those countries. I mainly use points and miles to fly to different places. So if I don't have enough points, then most likely I will not fly to those places. I do know there are countries where you can't use your points. In that case, I am willing to pay out of pocket, but obviously I'm gonna be careful with my budget to make sure that it is something that I can afford. There's also the cost of excursion. So for example, if you go to Africa, it's not really expensive to just go there, but if you wanna do something in Africa, it's super expensive. So for example, if I wanna to go to Tanzania, which I do plan to go sometime in the next several months, then the cost of going on a safari, I do know it's not gonna be cheap unless I can convince a bigger group of people to go there to see those animals. Having a place in my bucket list also takes an important precedence because even though the place has a must-see site, but it's not in my bucket list, then I won't care to see that place. And finally, I do have to manage my energy levels because when I do travel, I have noticed that I am dead exhausted from traveling so fast. And some ways that I use to offset and recharge my energy is by trying to fly on business class, on long haul flights, by redeeming my points on the higher class cabins. Also getting that lounge access in the airport to refresh myself also helps big time. Redeeming some points for a free night stay in a hotel is also very nice. And making sure I book in rest stops in between my travels to make sure that I am well rested. Now jumping in into Oceania, which is the region in the world that I have yet to finish visiting all the countries so far. The countries that I have not yet visited in Oceania are Fiji, Kiribati or Kiribati, Vanuatu, Solomon Islands, Marshall Islands, Palau, Tonga, Samoa, and Tuvalu. There's also countries like Timor-Leste or East Timor that is neighboring Indonesia, which is gonna be a little bit tough to visit. And finally, there's New Zealand, which is the most popular country on this list. And that one I will probably visit last just because it's very easy to visit that country. When I do go there, I would like to spend at least 30 days or at least a long period of time to really get to know that country. And I do plan on doing some kind of camper van road trip with my girlfriend should I decide to go there at some point in the future and really explore the country by land. The last country that I forgot to mention is Nauru, which is one of the smallest island nations in the world. And that one is gonna be a little bit tough to visit, but I do wanna visit it since it's in that region already. You could argue that I do wanna to go to Bora Bora, which is not really a country, but I'll throw that in as well since I do plan on visiting it at some point. And if I'm in the area already, then chances are I do wanna see it since I am already there. Now, the best way to go to the Pacific Island nations in Oceania 
is by flying on Fiji Airlines to go to Fiji. Now Fiji is going to be the major hub in that place to go visit the other island nations because you can use Alaska Airlines and for 17,500 Alaska miles, you can fly one way to many of those island nation countries. As a matter of fact, you can use your Alaska miles to fly to all those island nation countries except for Marshall Islands, Palau, and Nauru. East Timor is a little bit far off. It's closer to Australia. So if I want to go to Timor-Leste, then I would have to fly into Australia first. So most likely I can use my Avias points to fly from Fiji to Australia, most likely to Melbourne, because after doing some search, it seems like the only way to get to Darwin, Australia, which is the city I wanna be at that goes to East Timor, is to go to Melbourne first. Once I am in Melbourne, I can use my British Airways Avios to fly in Qantas to go to Darwin. And then from Darwin, I can fly the rest of the way to Timor-Leste. Timor-Leste and Darwin does have a Qantas flight, but after checking online, I see zero availability ever. So this is definitely not gonna work out. That means that the best way for me to fly between those countries is to either pay out of pocket or to use the Scotia reward points or other programs in Canada, such as Aventura, that will allow you to use those points on a flight redemption that's not covered by Aeroplan, British Airways Avios, or Alaska Miles. As for Palau and Marshall Islands, even though I've technically been in Marshall Islands already, I was only in the airport and I did not get the passport stamp. One of my rule for visiting a country is I need to either get a passport stamp or at least I need to go over outside of the airport for it to count. Or if I'm crossing a border, I need to hop over to the other side at least. And I didn't do any of that, even though technically my feet landed in Marshall Islands and I feel dirty saying that it does count for me that I've been to Marshall Islands. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be in Manila and Philippines, redeem my airplane points to fly to both Palau and into Marshall Islands. And that's how I'm gonna plan on visiting both those island nations. Anyways, that's about it today for my game plan on how to visit all those countries that I have not been to yet in Oceania. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave your comments below. And don't forget to sign up to our Travel Free newsletter where you can get a 10-step cheat sheet on how to travel around the world. You'll also get the latest tips and strategies on how to save money on travel for Canadians, how to go on a round the world adventure travel for Canadians, and how to use travel to get more freedom in your life as a Canadian. You can sign up for the newsletter in the description below. Until next time, I'll see you then.